Now, when you were growing up, when you were in, in let's say, grade school, mm-hmm. were there computers then? Wow. Uh, or was it back in see. the punch card era? Let's see. Well, actually, in fifth grade, our, our, our classroom got a Commodore. Um, it wasn't even a pet. It was a Commodore. Um, I forgot what the model number was. It, and it looked like one, the old McDonald's uh, cash registers. It wasn't even a physical keyboard. It was like a little touchpad. And uh, in high school, we had the Radio Shack TRS-80s and the Commodore PET 4032s. And then uh, from then on, it went to, you know, the, the, uh, the home user had the, the choice of a, like a Commodore uh, 64, which I had, with a tape drive. So it would take like 45 minutes to load a game. Would you say as far as we've come in computers that we're still in the infancy? Um, I don't know. Or, or are we developing it to a point or where there aren't going to be any major breakthroughs? Oh, uh, you know, honestly, I can't. You never know. You never know. You think, you think you've seen it all? Like we thought we saw it all back in the 80s and, and, and the early 90s. And, and now, you know, with the iPhones and the, and the little gadgets that, that kids are playing with, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Just the idea that we can put a camera in the studio and it can be seen worldwide. Mm-hmm. Anybody that has a Windows computer can get it. Uh, I asked Microsoft how many Windows equipped computers there were that could pick up a radio station like this one, uh, audio and video. And they said there's more than 900 million well, yeah, in the world. And, and don't limit it to computers because now they've got internet radios. You know, That's right. Where That's right. With presets where exactly. you can uh, punch up your favorite stations. Yeah, we have a... Uh, some German friends that stay here during the winter, and they, uh, on a little internet radio, they punch up six Berlin radio stations and mm-hmm. listen to the Berlin news sitting yep. on uh, on Bayfront uh, here in Clearwater. Yep. And, you know, with, with your iPhone and my, I have a Windows mobile phone, I can actually bring up Tantalk 1340 on my phone. So I can be in Europe driving on the Autobahn. As long as I've got internet access on the phone, I can listen to the stream. How many... Uh, Apple computers. What what share does Apple have of the uh, PC business? Not I, I, I have five a, or so, five percent. I think it's more than that more now. Than that, yeah. Um, by looking at our, our visitor stats to how many people um, access a lot of my clients' websites, um, it's between five to ten percent. What are the advantages of owning an Apple? And I know I know you're a PC guy. So. Um, you know they say it's a lot easier to use, which I kind of disagree with. Um, there is a lot less viruses and malware. Because, you know, if you're a hacker or a virus writer, are you going to write for 95% of the population or 5% of the population? Right. Uh, it's not that it's more difficult to hack into Apple. It's just that there are more people exactly. equ- equipped with it. Uh, but the, actually, the latest, tech, latest trend uh, in the last about two months there are people building Hackintoshes. And they're actually not going out to the Apple store to buy an, an Apple or a Mac or a Mac Pro notebook. They're actually buying... Um, PC hardware and actually installing the operating uh, an Apple operating system on them, so you can actually run Windows Vista and uh, Mac OS on the same computer. Now, what does your company do exactly? I know you you feed between our radio stations and uh, you feed audio and video for people. I I do a lot of uh, consulting, especially on new technology. Um, you know, one of the broadcasters you have here, Tom O'Brien. Uh, the Tiger Financial Network. I, I had a meeting with him, um, showing him new technologies on on how he can get more people coming to his website and listening to him. Um, we do a lot of networking, um, IP video uh, surveillance, and and like tourism webcams and stuff like that. The webcam cost has gone way down. Well, particularly the, the security cameras. What's the cheapest you can get a security camera now? Wow. Um, you can get like a one camera. You can get a capture card for your computer and turn your computer into a surveillance recording system. You can find them on eBay for $30. Unbelievable. And cameras yeah. Yeah. as low as, uh, I've seen them as low as $60. Uh, probably even less than that. So for less than three, four hundred dollars, you can get a four four camera system for your house or office. Now I know you're an expert in the internet. How do you? Uh, but everyone out there says they are, and a lot of them aren't. How do you tell? <laughs> you know, when they when when you say you're an expert, I'd be the first one to admit that if someone um, brags that they know everything about the internet, they're fooling themselves. Because I I look at that, I'm learning every day 
of new technologies and new ways of doing things. So it's the cocky little guy or the cocky person that, that you know, boasts that he knows everything are, are the ones that probably don't know as much as you think they do. Well, I think uh, re references of who you work for are a good idea. That's true. Uh, if you're going to hire somebody to be a, a computer consultant, uh, f find out who he works for and check him out, right? Sure. Just, just like you check any other uh, sure. uh, purported expert. How long have you been in this country? Uh, since 92. How did you get a visa that lasted that long? Uh, it's called an investor's visa and wow. following following all the legal oh, steps. Oh, you opened a business? And, and, yeah, we right. had an investor's visa and, and uh, followed the requirements. And then uh, I ended up meeting my, my wife and we got married and turned my uh, investor visa into uh, uh, citizenship. Okay. Oh, you're an American citizen? Yep. Did you keep the Canadian? Yeah. You, you never lose your citizenship, even though the oh, American... Oh, okay. So you're a dual. Yes. Dual citizen. Americans yeah. don't see it as dual. They see you as an American, where the Canadians, they don't... They now, really with, don't a, with a... I'm going to use the word uh, dual citizenship. Do you have two passports? Yes. You do? Yep. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Which one do you use if you go to Canada? I, I keep my U.S. one. You use the U.S. Yeah, yeah. The Americans never now, told me to turn in my Canadian ones. So. Starting this year, uh, people crossing the border, even to Canada and Mexico, have to show their passport. Yes. Uh, is that a problem? Um, I guess not. It, it's yeah, honestly, um, it's it's a lot easier to um, counterfeit a driver's license. It's if you've seen the new passports, they're it. It's incredible what they've done with. Uh, with the holograms and, and all that. So I, I think it's smart. Aren't computers now into every phase of our life, everything we do? Everything, everything. Um, they even have fridges now that are that are on the internet. And you can use, you know, if you're running out of milk, you, you're, you can tell your fridge to remind you that you need milk. You know, one of the early computer fans was Sam Walton of uh, way back when, uh, probably before you were born, Sam Walton was starting Walmart, and he was looking for te he was looking for technology to do things that it couldn't do, and it learned how to do it. But if you go to Walmart today, and let's say you buy a can of soup, mm -hmm. and uh, they're supposed to have 40 cans of soup of that brand, as soon as it goes through the checkout counter, it says we're under 40. Yep. Automatically, a purchase order goes out to Campbell's and says send more soup, and somebody tells the truck to bring the soup to that store. No one has touched anything except you bought a can of soup. Exactly. Uh, it's that complex uh, that it can reorder for the shelves. Stock, uh, I guess you have to physically stock the shelves. Mm -hmm. uh, are there other things that you think computers will be doing? Are we, how about the robot idea? Will that never uh, get big? You know, Sony, every year you always see the new Sony robot. You know, now they can run and dance and it, man. It, you know, you watch these these movies like iRobot, and it's probably going to be pretty soon, where robots are building robots to you know to populate themselves, and who knows who knows what what can happen down the road. Okay, I'm going to tell you how to get a hold of Internet John. We highly recommend him. He's been our guy for what I guess 15 years, long time. Yeah, pretty long. Uh, and Internet John, how do they get a hold of you on the phone and by web? Okay, on the phone seven two seven two three zero zero one two three. And on the web, uh, www.newvisioninc.com, which is N-E-U, vision, I-N-C.com. New vision, spelling new, N-E-U, yep. vision. Vision, Inc. V-I-S-I-O-N. I-N-C. I-N-C. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. And uh, he's the best. You're, oh, thanks. You're, you're keeping us going, and that's enough for me. Thanks for the compliment. And uh, you're the world's biggest hockey fan. Oh, awesome. So you never lost Can't that wait. by becoming an American citizen. Uh, no. It's a dream come true. Being a, a, a Canadian, coming down to Tampa to watch this Lightning win the Stanley Cup National in 2004. Oh, Was that great? Incredible. Okay. I, I got chills right now. I got goosebumps. Wow. <laughs> Internet John right here on Downtown Dave. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back.